So I'm just gonna let this finish loading, make sure that everything is clicking. Hopefully uh, you guys should be subscribed to my YouTube channel with the notifications turned on. Oh, oh that's too bright. Uh, so that way, just as I, as I post and I go live, you don't really have to watch everything I post, but you do wanna be aware of the things that I'm posting. Because oftentimes I will post um, responses to the students' questions and things of that nature. Let me get, let's see, let's do it. Okay. And then let me share my screen. Start the broadcast. And we'll start here. If we can get this to work. Let's go that's decent. And we'll go like this. Okay. So let me see if there are any announcements. So I'll check attendance again in about 15 minutes. I usually like to check it like right at the start of class, take, take a minute away from checking it. And then I'll check it again about 2.15. And as of late, I'm gonna get everybody full attendance credit. So you don't have to worry about that. Also, if you notice the attendance in a Blackboard, it, it should not, it, it's not factored directly into your grade. I'm just taking attendance more for record keeping. Uh, every now and then I'll have administrators pop up and be like, well, when was the last time Last time that you saw so-and-so? Have they ever attended your class? So I just have to keep a log of who's showing up, you know, you know, of, of some level. Uh, let me see. So this is the end of week two, right? So we want to take some time today to go through as much of section 1.2 lines as we can. I think last week we only had one session, so we only had enough time for orientation. So then we kind of did a makeup day on Monday where we went through section 1.1, I think it was graphs of equations. And so with this, this week was really supposed to be devoted to section 1.2. So this will kind of get us up to speed. Uh, as usual, this, you know, the setup is remote asynchronous. So once you've made it into my Zoom session, that means you've gotten your attendance credit. You're not obligated to stay. Uh, you can just leave and it's okay. I, I do live stream these sessions on YouTube. So you can always go back and watch it at your leisure. Uh, I do intend to make a student version of the notes available so that you can look at the notes of, ahead of class. And then whenever we sit down together, you know, we can go through that. The instructor notes, um, the notes that I'm going to post at each session, they're going to have a little, little bit more information uh, than the student version, right? The student version is really there for you to try to practice and attempt the examples, you know, with, with just a question and minimal support. See how far can you make it with minimal support. The further you can make it in the student notes, the better. But then if something's not clear, then that's when you pull up, you know, the notes from our session and, you know, I'll get that going. It's going to, it's going to be on Blackboard in the folder that, had, that says the box link is going to be in that, in that section. Um, so again, this week we're working on section 1.2. It'll be due this upcoming Sunday night at 11.59 PM going into Monday morning. Uh, that's going to be the homework and the quiz. Also be aware that with all assignments, we get unlimited attempts um, and there's only a 10% late penalty. For, for any assignment that, that includes exams, quizzes and homework, okay? Also, um, if you have questions, feel free to either unmute yourself or type your question in the chat. Uh, otherwise, um, I'm just gonna kind of make my way through the lecture. If you guys wanna go through the homework, we can, it just has to be requested and we can go through the homework. But everybody still has, to, is still responsible for their homework because it's uh, everybody, gets their own set of questions. It's the same questions with different numbers. So you still gotta submit, submit it yourself. Okay, so let's kind of start here. And we're gonna continue chapter one, graphs and functions. And today we're gonna be going through as much of section 1.2 lines as we can. A few objectives, we like to find the slope of a line, write the point slope form of the equation of, of a line, write the slope intercept form of the equation of a line, we like to recognize the equations of horizontal and vertical lines. We like to recognize the general form of the equation of a line. And we like to find equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. Now, let me see. I, one of the students earlier had a really good question. I can't recall the details of it. It was about like perpendicular lines. Actually, now I can recall it. But I, I would encourage you to just kind of, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to view my, the sessions with my other classes. I have like, four sections of college algebra one and i have a college algebra two the college algebra two it's the same material it's just you're you guys are not going to be responsible for what they're going through right now but what they're doing you know they're using all the stuff that that we're, we're 
sharing with you all and they're using it and applying it to the next part, right? So with this, with these objectives, it's chock full of like formulas, right? So again, I do wanna encourage everyone to be as neat and organized as possible. Hopefully you have like a, a notebook where you're, you're keeping track of the notes, you're taking notes as if you're in class. Uh, I, I will make the, all the stuff that you see me writing on the screen, I will make the PDF available. Um, and again, I do intend to load the student notes in advance, hopefully by the end of the day, uh, where you can use those for your base set of notes and then anything that you see me writing, you can use to update the notes. But uh, also anything that you see me writing, I'm gonna make it available. So you'll have a couple of different versions of the notes available. So you wanna have the notes available. You also wanna be, be keeping track or logging each homework question that you go through. So as you as you work through a homework question, you wanna have a copy of the original question, have any supporting work for that question, and then have your final answer in a box. Um, it's important to be neat and organized because there's a high chance that you're gonna see all this stuff again, where it's gonna, it's gonna be worth a good portion of your grade, right? Hint, hint, right? So the homework and the quizzes are there to prepare you for the exams, but if you haven't really been taking notes, you haven't been practicing, that's not gonna serve you. Um, so, you know, that's the long and short of all of that. Okay, uh, let me check, let me check Zoom one more time. Let's see if we have any stragglers. Let me get the stragglers. So here's one. I had a question. Give me just a second. Uh, and then, Ludwig, that's an interesting name. Go ahead. Are the um ex exam uh gonna be online as well? Yeah, it's gonna be pretty yeah, pretty much just like um uh, just like the homework and quizzes, but hopefully you've started working your way through the quizzes. Yeah, I will give you a heads up about the exams. Uh they change each time you take it. Right. And the first thing is, I think I made prerequisites for the exam. So in order to access the exam, you would have to have passed exams for weeks one, two and three. So that's sections one, 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 two and one, three. So in order to access the exams, you have to pass quizzes for weeks one, two and three. And then every time you take the exam is going to change. So you kind of need to have a sense. You need to know what you're doing when you go to take. it. You know, so that's a that's long and short of all of that for right now. All right. I got a question as well. Go ahead. Will the exams have uh, formula sheets on them, like for us to use, or are we supposed to? So that's why I keep uh, create your own notebook. Even if you use somebody else's formula sheet, that's not going to serve you. What I found that if you, it's nothing wrong with it to use somebody else's stuff. But what I found is that you're not going to know what's in there. You might have one sheet that has a formula, but you're not going to know it. You, you have a greater chance of knowing it if you create it, if you just make it yourself. Just take some time. Every time you come across a formula, update your formula sheet. And then that way, when you when you go to sit and do this stuff, you're going to be like, wait a minute, I remember I did that. Then let me flip to my Bible. Let me flip to my book, you know, that I created. And let me let me use that. Right. But the home, the exam is going to resemble more closely to the way the quizzes are set up. So it's like minimal support. You don't get feedback until you submit it. And then you get your grade at the end. And then if you want to improve it, you just take it again. All right? You get unlimited attempts. Um, past the due date, the highest you can earn is a 90. Right? And the system is set to take your high score. These are really good questions, right? So, you know, you got to make a plan. Just make a plan and execute. It's going to be okay. Okay? All right. And, yeah, again, just keep, keep the questions coming. That's what this time is for. So we have a few definitions. Uh, can I get a volunteer to read this slide for me? All right, I got it. Um, since the graphs of the first degree equations and two variables are straight lines, these equations are called linear equations. We measure the steepness of a line by a number called its slope. All right, so that was pretty straightforward. Uh, first degree equations, that's just the highest, that's the highest exponent on any variable. And these are just straight lines. That one's pretty straightforward. Um, 
we have some definitions. It says the rise is the change in y coordinates between the points, and the run is the corresponding change in the x coordinates, right? So when we're doing slope, slope is basically the rise over the run, which is the change in y over the change in x. So the change in y, you got to say y2 minus y1, right? And you get a result. The change in x, you're going to say x2 minus x1, and you get a result. Um, notice, notice here, for this first one, as we trace it left to right, it goes up, right? So that's, that's, that means it has a positive slope. But with the second one, as we trace it left to right, it goes down. So it has a negative slope, right? So positive slope versus negative slope is always based on when you trace it left to right, is it going up or is it going down, okay? Uh, let me get somebody to read this slide for me, please. Thank you. The slope of a non-vertical line that passes through the points P, X1, Y1, and Q, X2, Y2 is denoted by M and is defined by M equals rise over run, which equals Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. The slope of a vertical line is undefined. Awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, so if you have your formula sheet, this is definitely one that you want to include on your formula sheet. So with lines, there are three main formulas that we kind of flow between. By the end of this presentation, we'll have all three of them. Uh, if you have a formula sheet, you definitely want to include, include this. This is one of the three main equations when we're working with lines. Let's see. OK, so in this example, it's about finding and interpreting the slope of a line. We're actually sketch the graph of the line that passes through this point, these two points. And then find and interpret the slope of the line. I'm going to do a rough sketch, just a quick sketch. So P is right one and down one. Q is right three and up three. So we're, it looks like we're working in quadrant one. So let me see. There's my positive Y. It's here. Positive X is here. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let me see. And this is just a rough sketch. So P is over one and down one. So I'm gonna let this be about there. This is P, which is one comma negative one. And then Q is three, three. So if we go right three and up three, we're about here. This is Q, which is the point three comma three, right? So then when we go to graph this line, we basically connect it with the straight edge about like that and i'm going to put another arrow going this way right because we're basically saying that this is a line um it, and it goes on forever in both directions right so then it says to find and interpret the slope so the slope is the change in y over the change in x let's start with the formula so one of my professors he would say every time you use a formula write it down that constant repetition of writing the formula helps to ingrain it into your memory. Okay, I'm, that's, I'm gonna leave it there because there's more I wanna say, but you know, it's unnecessary. So then the slope is a rise over the run. So that's a change in Y over change in X. So that's gonna be Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Also, I personally am a fan of labeling my points. So I like to label it X1, Y1 x2 y2 right then for me that just makes it much easier to just plug it into my formulas so then my y2 is three my y1 is negative one notice my use of parentheses my x2 is three and my x1 is one so i think that double negative becomes positive so on top we get four on bottom we get two so then the slope is ultimately two let me do the following just because I can. I just want to shrink it down just a little bit, move this guy like about here, and then put it back. Okay. I'll check attendance in just a moment. Let me finish this one out. So we got a slope of two, right? That's the calculation. And again, we can even look at the graph, right? So if we said the rise, so notice as we trace it left to right, the line is increasing, it's going up. So that means we have a positive slope. 
And then, you know, let me see. If we did the rise over the run, so I think we went up four. I think that's like four. And then we went to the right by two. So then we, you see the four over two, you see it here. All right, so we did the rise over the run. Let me get that. So what this with a slope of two, what that means is that y changes by two every time x changes by one. All right, so every time x increases by one, y increases by two. That's what that means. Okay. So, so sketch the graph. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. Well, I thought it was gonna match up, but it didn't, but that's okay. Um, finding the interpret. So the graph of the line passing through these points is here. We went up by four, we did a run of two. So then we talked about the slope and then we have an application of the formula, all right? So we have one of our formulas um, for the three formulas whenever we're working with lines. And we, there's, there's typically a flow, like I'll, we'll, we'll usually start at one and we'll finish at another. And you know, it's oftentimes a flow between these three equations. We're gonna see it in all three momentarily. Let me pause uh, for a moment there. So do we have any more stragglers? The stragglers look good. The chat looks good. Can I get a volunteer um, to read the slide, please? And thank you. I'll go ahead. <clears throat> Scanning graphs from left to right, lines with positive slopes rise and lines with negative slopes fall uh, to the greater absolute, no, the greater the absolute value of the slope, the steeper the line. Um, three, the slope of a vertical line is undefined and uh, the slope of a horizontal line is zero. Zero, uh, <clears throat> fantastic, that was awesome. All right, so these are some main facts about slopes of lines. So I think we mentioned a moment ago that when we scan from the left to the right, when we have a positive slope, the graph rises and then with a negative slope, the graph falls. But the main point there is you gotta trace it from the left to the right. The greater the absolute value of the slope, the steeper the line. The slope of a vertical line is undefined and the slope of a horizontal line is zero, okay? So this brings us to our second um, main formula whenever we're working with lines. So now we have two, two of the three formulas um, that we, we just wanna have these at our disposal whenever we're working with lines because it, it'll flow between these. So it says, if a line has a slope M and passes through this point X1, Y1, and then the point slope form of the equation of the line is given by this, all right? So we use this formula whenever we're given a point and a slope, all right? We use this formula whenever we're given some one point and a slope, okay? So we have a slope formula, we have a point slope formula, and that's two of the three. Let's keep going. So we're asked to find a point slope form of the equation of the line passing through this point with this slope, then solve for y, right? So they gave us a slope, so we don't really need the slope formula. So they gave us a slope and they gave us a point. So it's a good idea to use the point slope formula, right? So point slope formula, again, every time we use a formula, it is recommended that you write it down. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. And you'll see that, like, you know, they have a rhythm to them. And the only way you're going to, like, catch the rhythm is if you're, you know, you have to develop, like, an intimate relationship with the information. You don't really have to, but, you know, that's the recommendation. Okay. So, and again, I'm also a fan of labeling my point. So this is my X1, Y1. I don't think we have an X2 or Y2, and we got our slope here. So let's take those parts and plug them in. So we're gonna say y minus, now y1 was what, negative two. Our slope was three. And our x1 was one, okay? So that's those are those different components plugged in. Also, I want you to notice, notice my use of parentheses with that negative. I know that trips students up a lot of times, right? So, okay, so then we did that. So then it asks us to solve for y. 
Anybody want to just give me an overview? What are the steps that we need to do if we're going to solve for Y from here? What, is, what are some things that you notice? Or what would you do? What would Jesus do? <laughs> Jesus would probably wave his hand. Okay. All right. So that brings me to this. All right. You've got to brace yourself. All right. I'm giving you fair warning. It's, it's poor joke time. It's time for a bad joke. Okay. It's a dad joke, whatever you want to call it. Poor joke. I don't care. But I have to say it. So there's this case where um, Jesus and the devil are in a typing contest. I mean, this is a serious, like, no holes bar to claim all of the souls of humanity, right? So they're in a typing contest. I mean, they're going, like, this is going on for, like, eons. They're typing, typing, typing. They're just going, 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 going. They're traveling through time, out of time, into time, out of time. They're going real hard. I mean, they're neck and neck. And, you know, you don't know who's going to win, but they're going neck and neck and neck and neck. And then all of a sudden, in the, in the heat of the competition, power goes out. But you know who won, right? Jesus won because Jesus saves. Okay. I'm not really like, that's just a joke. It's not anything beyond that. <laughs> okay. All right. So now I forgot where I went there, but okay. So here, right. So what would you do? Right. That's where that came from. If you, if you're looking at this, what anybody want to give this a go? What do you see? Can you notice anything? So, for instance, there, I see about at least two things, right? We got this three. I'm a fan of distributing this three, right? We can distribute the three. And we got a double negative over here, right? So double negative, we can make those positive. So let's, let's account for those changes. So then on the left, we're going to have y plus two. On the right, we're going to have 3x minus three, right? Now, if we want to solve for y, in order to, we want to isolate the y, so we want to move this two to the other side. So we want to use the inverse operation to move this to the other side of the equal sign. What's the inverse operation of plus two? Minus two. Minus two, right? So we want to subtract two on both sides. All right, so I'm gonna just create a little bit of space and we want to subtract two on both sides, all right? So on the left, these guys are gonna, they add to zero. And I think we're just left with Y. And then on the right, we got three X, negative three plus negative two is negative five, all right? So then when we solve for Y, we finish in this form. Now this form, come on. This form is called uh, the slope intercept. It's in the Y equals MX plus B. We're gonna see it, we're gonna develop that a little bit more in just a moment, right? So notice the slope is three, we see it here. And then it is a good idea to verify that it passes through this point. So what we're saying is that when X is one, Y should be negative two, right? So then three minus five is indeed negative two, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a box. Anybody here like a, a nutritionalist? Anybody ever said the nutrition? For some reason, I have this like weird craving. Sometimes I get into these bouts where I crave like potato salad. It's the weirdest thing. And like mustard. Like as a kid, I could not stand mustard. But now it's like, sometimes I just need the mustard. And I know that like mustard is good for like cramping, you know, like um, Charlie horses. Like when you go running and stuff like that, it, it helps to combat that. The pick, pickle juice does that. Mustard does that, bananas do that to combat getting cramps in your body. Um, but yeah, I just think it's strange. But I know that there's something in my body is craving. So what you see here is a type version of what we just did, right? Just to kind of compare and contrast and, you know, type version of what we just did. Okay. Here we're asked to find a point slope form of the equation of the line passing through these points and then solve for y, okay? So, uh, anybody, can anybody give me an overview or a plan of approach or a plan of action? How, how, how can we go about solving this one? Is asking for the point slope, right? So when we're doing the point slope, what are the two pieces of information that we need whenever we're doing point slope? So typically when we're doing the point slope, 
what are the two pieces of information that we need? The point and the slope. Okay, do we have at least one point? Yes. Yeah, we have at least we have at least point one point. Do we have the slope? All right, we, we don't have the slope, but what, what, what can we do? All right, so. Put it in a point slope form. Not the point slope, but the we can find the slope. I think you got it, right? So the point here, so let's, let's write out the formulas that we're gonna be using. So it, it asks us to find the point slope. So here, let me see the point, point slope form. Uh, that one is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. But then in order to use the point slope, we need the slope. And so since we don't have the slope, we're going to find the slope using the slope formula. Right? Slope is change in y over change in x. So that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So again, these are two of the three formulas. Um, that will be flowing between, there's a third one and we're gonna talk about it in just a moment. Now, also I am a fan of labeling my points immediately. So I like to go X1, Y1, X2, Y2, right? So since we're missing the slope, let's go ahead and find the slope. So then uh, I'm just gonna kind of work beside this. So then our slope is gonna be our y2 is seven minus our y1 is one divided by three minus a negative two. That looks like the ends up being six over five. That's our slope. So now we have a slope. Now, what's your favorite point? The first point or the second point? Which point is your favorite? The first one or the second one? So I think like uh, my students earlier, they chose the second point. So just to be different, I'm gonna choose the first point uh, and see if we should get the same result. So if I use the first point with that slope, uh, we're gonna plug it into the point slope formula. Okay. So then we're gonna say Y minus, let me see my Y one is one in this case. Our slope is six over five uh, times X minus, X1 is negative two. Now, when I did it earlier, I did get rid of the fraction, but it didn't really help us. So I'm gonna go ahead and solve for Y by using the inverse operation. I wanna move this one by using the inverse operation. I'm gonna do a couple of steps in one go. So I'm gonna move the one to by adding one on both sides. That's gonna cancel that. And the six over five, I'm gonna, I got this double negative becomes positive and I'm gonna distribute this six over five into the parentheses, right? So let's, I know that's a little bit jammed, but so after all of those changes, we get six over five X. Uh, let me see, six over five times two is gonna be 12 over five. And then I think it's plus one. So plus one becomes five over five. Now you can use calculators, right? You don't have to do this by hand. Uh, I'm just, I'm just getting some practice on it by hand. So then get y equals six over five x plus seventeen over five. Let me do it like this. This is our y equals. So this is what's recommended. Like stuff like this is what was recommended. It goes into your notebook, or you have a copy of the original question. You have all the supporting work or details and then your final answer in a box. Let me, I just wanna move some stuff around to make it look a little bit like that. And then I think it's really, I don't need this stuff over here. Actually, not even that. Something like that, we're gonna shrink this down just a little bit. I like that, right? So we found the slope. We took that slope and plugged it into point slope. And then we got this. 
when we solve for y. Okay. All right. So then I think we have some prepared notes. So first, if we found the slope, we got a slope of six over five. Now I think in the prepared notes, they use the point three comma seven because it just it just looked like come here, come here, come here, come here. I'm here. I'm here. Come on. Come on. Come here. Come here. Come here. Sorry, my, my chihuahua, she loves to like, any, and she hears any kind of noise, then she like loses her mind. So, you know, but she does seem like she kind of calms down if I'm like holding her. Okay. So the notes chose the point three comma seven where we chose the point, the other point, whatever it was, negative two comma one or whatever it was. Uh, but notice we still got to the same result. It didn't, it didn't matter, right? As long as you have a point on your line with the proper slope, you're good to go. Because we got the same result. Okay, let's take a let's pause for the cause there. I just want to kind of check the chat and like check Zoom really quickly. We shouldn't have any stragglers. We've got a lot of people holding strong and the chat looks clear. So let's uh let's keep the party going. Hopefully we're all aboard and we're not all bored, <laughs> you know, because I know I know this stuff can kind of drone. And so that's why I kind of like be a little bit animated with this, just so it's not so monotone. Let me see, here we're asked to find the point slope form of the equation of the line with a slope m and a y-intercept b. And then we're asked to solve for y, right? Point slope form. So it says to find the point slope form. So it's a good idea to go ahead and pull that, um, pull that formula. So point slope is gonna be y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, right? Okay, it says the slope is m and the y-intercept is b. So if the y-intercept is b, let me see, if the y-intercept is b, so then that's going to be the point 0, comma, b, right? So what that means, let me think, um, let's make this, let's make this black, right? So then this can be our x1 and our y1. And then the slope is just M, right? So those that's what we're plugging in here, All right? Okay. So then we're gonna have Y minus, now our Y1 is B, the slope is M, X minus X1 is zero. Now, if we solve for Y, it's kind of like the same thing we did before. You know, add B on both sides. Right, and simplify. So this is going to cancel. X minus zero is just going to be X. All right. So then zero plus anything is itself. So then ultimately we finish with Y equals MX plus B. Right. And so what this is, this is our third uh, formula that well we typically we typically are working with when we're working with lines. All right, y equals mx plus b. This is called the slope intercept form. In this form, this is the easiest way to graph a line where the b is our y intercept that tells us where to start on the y axis. And then the slope is gonna tell us how to get to the second point. So once you have two points, you can easily graph the line by connecting them with a straight edge, All right? So here's the type version of what we just did. And again, this is called the slope intercept form. y equals mx plus b. So just to kind of recap, when we're working with lines, we have three uh, formulas that we, we want to have at our disposal. The first is the point slope. Actually, before that one. The first one, let's, let's, we want to have the slope formula, right? That's uh, change of y over change in x. So that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that's our slope. And then the second formula we want to have at our disposal is the point slope. We use we use that one where we when we have a point and a slope, right? And that one is going to be y minus y one equals m times x minus x one. And then the third one is the one that you see uh, is the slope intercept. Slope intercept. And that's going to be your y equals mx plus b, right? 
So whenever we're working with lines, you want to have these three available. And we, we kind of flow. We tend to flow between these, right? Sometimes we'll graph straight from here. Sometimes we'll be given two points where we got to find the slope and then use it here. You know, sometimes we can just start right here, all right? But whenever you're working with lines, you just want to have these three ready to go. If you don't know them, you just want to have them ready to go. And now, can anybody notice a similarity between these first two? Can you notice something between these? So they both have um, X and the Y. Right, right. Like they look very similar, right? How could we how could we make this first one look like the second one? If we did what on both sides? So if we multiply both sides by this X, the, by the denominator, right? If we multiply both sides by the denominator, we're gonna get this. Right. And if you just drop the twos. So if you want to train, if you want to go from this one to this one, multiply both sides by the denominator, you'll finish. You'll finish with this guy on the right. And then you just drop the two and you're there. Right. So the, I call these a two for because you get two for one. Right. So if you know this one and you know that manipulation, you automatically get this. one. Now, you know, now for our purposes, you don't have to commit these to memory. You just need to know how to use them. You just need to know how to use them. But in the olden days, when you did have to rely on your memory, that's, I just noticed it. I was like, wait a minute. If I just multiply both sides by the denominator, I get this, you know, and drop my two over there. Okay. But again, all you really need is just to have these at your disposal and know how to use them. So we're asked to graph the line whose equation is this, right? So I'm going to do a, just a rough sketch, a quick sketch. It's not high, high, it's not high, highly detailed or whatever up to and over three. So I think we're working in quadrant one. So I'm gonna let this, this is my positive Y. This is my positive X, right? Um, and this is just a rough sketch. This is not drawing the scale or anything. So if we're graphing this, this is in the form Y equals MX plus B. So our B is plus two, right? So I'm just gonna let this be my two right here. This is y equals two, right? So the b, this guy right here, tells us to start on the y-axis at y equals two. Then the slope tells us how to get to our second point. The slope, this slope tells us to go up two and then right by three. So if we go up two, we're gonna be at four, and right by three is about here, right? And they're gonna cross about there. That, that the basically the slope tells us how to get to the second point. Then we just connect it with the straight edge. Uh, we can shorten this. We don't have to. I mean, that's essentially it, right? Does someone have a question? Okay, that's good. All right, so. So that would be the graph, right? So again, in the slope intercept form, in this form, we're given our slope and we have our y-intercept. So that's just the easiest way to graph a line. Start on the y-axis at two, using a slope of two thirds, you get a second point and then connect the two points with the straight edge. We got five minutes. Let me just take the next five minutes to get through as many examples as I can. And then um, we'll call it a day at that point. Right, so this is just a type version of what we just did. My dog still hears something upstairs, and so she is intent on just investigating. And if she can't get by the door, she's just going to scream. Okay, let's take a moment to look at this. So graphs of horizontal and vertical lines. For any constant k, the graph of the equation y equals k is a horizontal line with a slope of zero. So if y equals some number, that's going to be a horizontal line with a slope of zero. The graph of the equation x equals k is a vertical line with an undefined slope. So when we have y equals some number, that's a horizontal line with a slope of zero. When we have x equals some number, that's gonna be a vertical line with an undefined slope, okay? So discuss the graph of each equation in the xy plane. So, so for this first one, right, we have y equals two. That's, 
there's going to be a horizontal line uh, that, that passes through the wire intercept of two, right? It's a horizontal line that passes through the wire intercept of two, uh, and it has a flat, it has a slope of zero. This is going to be a vertical line that passes through x equals four with an undefined slope. So this one's horizontal passing through y equals two. This is vertical with an undefined slope that passes through x equals four, right? And we got a tight version of all of that here. So the equation y equals two may be considered as an equation of two variables, blah, 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 blah. The graph of y equals two is gonna be a line parallel to the x-axis, two units above it with the slope of zero, right? A horizontal line through y equals two, right? So that was a little bit overkill, the explanation, but you know. And then the second one was a vertical line through x equals four, right? Um, this, I'm just kind of mention this. So as you're working through the homework on Pearson, uh, the reason I personally vouch for Pearson, I think it's just extremely user-friendly. It's a great remote learning tool. The homework questions, just about all the questions come with an explanation. So like, say you're working through a question and you get stuck. If you click on the viewing example, they'll give you, they'll explain how to work the question through, through all the details, right? So that's a very powerful tool. After using the viewing example and trying some of the other tools that those still don't work, then you want to make use of the Ask My Instructor tool. And what that'll do is send me a screenshot of the very question you're working on. I can load it and I can give my perspective on it. And you want to just kind of keep going until you find a perspective that like where it sinks in for you. If you can't get it from me, then maybe your classmate or a tutor, you know, you just got to keep going until you find a perspective that works for you. Or either you find, you know, just make it yourself. The general form of the equation of a line, the graph of every linear equation, ax plus by plus c equal to zero, where a, b, and c are constants and not both a and b are zero is a line, right? So we don't want both of these guys to be zero. I think it's okay if one or the other. The equation ax plus by plus c equal to zero is called the general form of the equation of a line. I think we got time for one more. So find the slope, y-intercept, and x-intercept of the line with this equation then sketch the graph, okay. So for me, the simplest way to, to achieve all of those goals is just to go ahead and solve for y, all right? So let me start by getting a copy of the original. This will be our last example for the day. So we're starting at three x minus four y plus 12 equal to zero. I wanna go ahead and add my four y to both sides, I'm, but I'm gonna flip the, the way I write it. So if I add four y to both sides, I'll get 4y equals 3x plus 12. So again, I just added this to this side and then I just switched the order. Then next I wanna divide all terms by four cause I'm trying to, I wanna do the inverse operation of this guy. So since I'm multiplying by four, the inverse operation is divide or division. So here I wanna divide all terms by four. And let me clean up my three a little bit. Oops. Okay. So then when we do this, a number divided by itself is one. One times anything is itself. And then we get the follow-up. Three over four X plus three. Okay. So now, so from this form, now we can, we can at least answer the parts, right? So the slope, is gonna be three by four. Um, there, there, this is a shortcut, but I'm gonna do, um, <clears throat> let me see. So for the wire intercept, for the wire intercept, we set X to zero. So if we set X to zero, that this term goes to zero and we're left with just three, Y equals three. So for the wire intercept, we're just gonna say, I'm gonna do it as a zero comma three for the wire intercept. And then for the X intercept, we set Y to zero. So if we set y to zero and solve, subtract three on both sides, and then you're gonna multiply by four over three. So you get, it looks like you get a negative four. So then negative four comma zero, all right? I didn't show those details just cause we we're kind of short on time, but basically I set y to zero and solve. And then a quick sketch. So we got our, we got our y intercept, x intercept, Honestly, once you have two points, that's more than enough to graph. 
once you have two points, it's more than enough to grab. So let me see. Left four. Okay, so we're in quadrant two. So then let me think how I want to write this. So usually I do like the positive X's in this direction. Nope. Now I know we're working on the left here, so I'm gonna go like this. Okay, so my positive X is over here. My positive Y is here. Um, we got a wire intercept of three. So three is about here. And again, this is just a rough sketch, zero comma three. And then we got negative four. So three is about there, negative four is about here. And then we can just connect those with the straight edge. Stop. Nope. You're gonna have to wait. No. I know. Because you would be doing too much. So now you have to wait. And then we just connect those with the straight edge. And I'm gonna do this very quickly. Okay. So notice we our slope is is three over four. So if we go up three, one, two, three, and then right four, one, two, three, four, you know, we'll we'll be at that second point. And notice it's a positive slope. So as we trace it left to right, it goes up. It passes through the points zero, three, and negative four, comma zero, you know. That's that's about all that we can do there. Let's just check with the prepared notes. Same slope, y-intercept is three, x-intercept is negative four, and that's the same graph that we got. Okay. So on that note, we're gonna end the session here. Did you guys, are there any burning questions before, before we go our separate ways? Any questions? Okay, just as a quick recap. So this is like the end of week, what, two? So we, we're, we're essentially caught up. This week we did section 1.2. So next, this, this, these assignments are due Sunday night at 11.59 PM. Next week, we're, gonna, we're just gonna focus only on section 1.3, right? So that's gonna be week three. Uh, week four, exam one is gonna become available. I think for exam one, we said that there's a prerequisite where you need to pass quizzes for weeks one, two, and three. Unlimited attempts. The system is going to take your highest score past the due date, which is basically a week later. Um, the highest you're going to earn is a 90. If there aren't any burning questions, we're going to end the session here. And from one beautiful mind to another, enjoy the rest of your day. Hey, guys, take care. Peace. Yeah. Yep. You're free. Go ahead. Sir, is this the first grade check for the week? Uh, so our assignments are due basically on a weekly basis, um, Sunday nights at 11.59 p.m. So we had one assignment due this past Sunday night. Um, you can still work on it. It's only a 10% late penalty. Your homework is only 10% of your overall grade and the quiz is only 10%. So it's a very low like penalty. Um, so you just want to go ahead and get caught up and then, you know, just get, position yourself for success for exam one. All right. Thank you, sir. Yep. Right. So let's do. Let me check one other thing. If I check the chat, this is the second grade check, right? So every 